We are moving on to week number six of our NFL previews, our NFL team previews here on bet.noah.com, powered by the Datitude Podcast. I am Jim Derry, and today it's the Chicago Bears. As we move on to the NFC North, maybe the most, well, you know, we say that a lot about divisions. You know, we talked about with the NFC West how interesting it was. We talked about the same thing last week with the AFC North. The NFC North, as a whole, maybe not the most interesting division in the NFL, but it has a couple of teams that I think are some of the most interesting teams in the NFL. This ain't one of them. Chicago Bears coming in off of a six-win season, and they're over-under this year is at six and a half. Now, before we get to our graphic with the numbers on it, we talk about a new coach and Matt Eberflus and how much you know, how much change can that actually make for this team? Can they take the next step? They have a quarterback in Justin Fields who got his feet wet last year, got his chance to start, had a great backup in Andy Dalton. Well, this year, the reins are all his. Justin Fields is on an island by himself because his backup is Trevor Simeon. I'm not going to get into all the things I've talked about with Trevor Simeon last year. But Justin Fields, the unquestioned starter and unquestioned leader on offense of this team, can he take the Bears to where they need to go? Here's my biggest problem, and it's not really with Justin Fields, although I think he has a long way to go to become an above-average quarterback in the NFL, and not just because he's from Ohio State, boys and girls. The problem, the biggest problem with the Chicago Bears on offense and their defense, who lost Khalil Mack, isn't that great either. But their offensive line could be the worst in football. So how are you going to get better on offense? How are you going to generate points on offense if you don't have an above-average quarterback and you have maybe the worst offensive line in football? You look at their running back situation, David Montgomery is just fine. He's a solid running back. In fact, maybe a, certainly an above-average quarterback, a running back. Maybe he's a top-10 running back. Khalil Herbert is an okay backup. And their receiving core is led by Darnell Mooney, a solid receiver. There's no question about it. The, the two-lane product, he's done a really good job, and he's improved tremendously over his time in the NFL. But is he a number one receiver? Is he a guy who you want to lead your receiving core? Byron Pringle coming over for Kansas City, who is in – on special teams and was probably their third or fourth receiver and now the number two for the Bears with Justin Fields, their quarterback. Does that make you feel confident in this Bears team? Doesn't make me confident. So let's look at the numbers. We talked about them. We teased to them. Six and a half over at plus 130. So Vegas wants you to take this over. There is no question that Vegas wants you to take this over. And you got to pay a lot of juice if you want the under Six and a half at minus 150. And you look at the other other numbers, there, there's no way we're playing any of these. I, I know division title at 13 to 1. Bears fans might well want to lay a couple bucks on there in case something happens. But do we really think they can overtake the Vikings or the Packers? I don't. Conference title plus 7,000, Super Bowl title plus uh, 150, uh, plus 15,000 to win. So 15 to 1. Not any numbers I'm going to play. It leads me straight to the Chicago Bears schedule, which in the grand scheme of things is not a tough schedule. In fact, it's listed as the 24th toughest in the NFL. But you look how it starts. San Francisco at Green Bay. To me, that's an 0-2 start. I don't see how it would have to be a major upset for that not to be an 0-2 start. You get a break with Houston, a game that they can win, not saying they will, but a game that they can will win. And then at the much-improved New York Giants, we've already told you what we thought about the Giants. At Minnesota, going to be one of the better teams in this division and maybe in this league. Uh, Washington isn't that great, so maybe you can chalk up a one there. At New England, at Dallas. So as quote-unquote easy as this schedule is, you're looking at a 2-6 and six start, in my opinion. And that's if they beat Houston and they beat Washington or the Giants. So I think a 2-6 and six start is easily on the horizon for this team it gets a little bit easier but then you look at the end and I don't understand why this is 24th because to me Green Bay by week Philadelphia Buffalo granted those three games are all at home so they're at home for a month of the season but then they finish at Detroit 
and home from Minnesota. Look, let's we're going to get to the expert in just a second, but my final thoughts on Chicago is the only number, if you're going to play anything with this Bears team, it's got to be under maybe a, a bet, uh, a weighted bet to not make the playoffs. This team's not going anywhere. And you can re- you can play this recording back to me. If I'm wrong, I'll fess up. But to me, I don't see how this team isn't the worst division. Spoiler alert. I don't see how this team isn't the worst division in this division. The worst division in this division? The worst team in this division. We'll get to the other three in just a minute. We've already told you what we thought about the others. I think it's going to be a fight between Chicago, um, Atlanta, maybe, potentially Washington for the worst teams in this division. We'll find out. And not only that, if I didn't think Atlanta was so bad, another spoiler alert, I think the Bears would be in the running for the number one pick in the draft. Sorry, Matt Eberflus. Hope that doesn't ruin your your preseason here. I'm sure you're watching bet.nola.com. I know who is watching. It's our expert. He's coming on to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. It's a whole week of new previews here on bet.nola.com. And it's a whole week of agreements, disagreements. Who knows what we have this week? Adam Chernoff of Covers.com is here. Our expert is here to tell me whether I'm right, wrong, or he's just a little indifferent. And Chicago Bears, speaking of indifference, the <laughs> Chicago Bears, I really, you know, they're over of six and a half, and you, and you got to, they're trying to beg you to take the over here, Adam. Um, I, I, if I had to pick one, I would take the under, but this isn't a team I'm going to play in any way. I'm not a fan of Justin Fields. He's got work to do. They have a new coach in Matt Eberflus. And, you know, even though they have an easy schedule, I'm just not a fan of this team. And I, I'm not sure what to think. Big worry for me is you go from Matt Nagy, who we'll call him whatever you want to, but he was an offensive-minded coach. Now you go to a defensive-minded coach, usually a flag for most teams that you kind of want to stay away or potentially look towards the under. Where I'm concerned with Eberflus is he brings in an O.C., that we've already seen throughout camp and then even the first preseason game. Uh, lots of room for improvement for Getze as the offensive coordinator. So not only are you sort of void of skilled position talent players, you have a coaching staff around it that probably isn't going to get the most out of those guys, especially early on. So it's um, a tough team to look over in any way. This is going to be a pretty bad football team in the 2022 season. In the grand scheme of things, the backer quarterback doesn't matter all that much. And Lord knows I've been one to bash Trevor Simeon here uh, with <laughs> his time in New Orleans, and I'm trying not to. But to me, if something happens to Justin Fields, who obviously still has a great learning curve and I think was probably learning with Andy Dalton there, and now he has Trevor Simeon, I think that the quarterback position with all the things that Fields has to learn could be a trouble spot. Yeah, he's he's got a great deep ball. Um, I don't think that gets enough attention, but it when you don't have anyone to throw to outside of Darnell yeah. Mooney and you don't have a coaching staff to make the most of it, it's tough, really tough. Yeah, you lose Allen Robinson, you lose Khalil Mack, and you still have the rest of the guys. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we're going to move on. We're going to talk to you about the Detroit Lions tomorrow. Can't wait. It should be fun.